Hello there friends, you're back to the CSGO news live channel, because today we have a ton of news about the old good CSGO. For now, the pro scene can't transition smoothly from one game to another, and some tournaments are still being held in CSGO, while others are already planned for CS2. Anyway, let's talk about all of this today, and without further ado, let's get straight to it. As always, we start with the roster changes, and immediately we've got some bombshell news. For instance, according to Overdrive, Liquid have dropped Rainwave. It's been a few months since they formed this lineup and already changes are afoot. This is also confirmed by Dust2. According to their information, Rain Waker hasn't been kicked out permanently. They're currently looking for a fifth player and if they don't find one, he'll stay. In the upcoming tournaments, Liquid's coach Daps will be playing. It's unclear why such drastic changes are being made mid-season to the point where they have to put the coach in as a player. Probably some major internal conflicts. I honestly don't see any other reason for such dramatic replacements. Surely Daps won't outfrag Rain Waker. And that's just the beginning. The next roster changes will be even more intense. But let's take a little break. Finally, Tyloo officially signed Cyclone, totally predictable and expected. But what's happening in Astralis is mind-blowing. Just recently, the Danish club made the biggest roster changes in their history, removing Glaive and Zipnix and taking on Stair and Borop in their place. But it seems something didn't click for the guys even though they played in the EPL playoffs, they didn't achieve any significant results. Then came the news from Harumi, Astralis is removing two players at once, they're already actively looking for new ones and negotiating with transfers. One thing is for sure, it's not Device and Blamef, but all the other guys don't have the kind of trust or credit. Even former teammates chimed in, for instance Boobski noticed that in a recent interview Device said the following. I have high hopes for the core team containing me, Buzz and Blamef. These guys have become like family and I believe we can achieve remarkable things in the future. So even the former Astralis players have noticed some oddities in the current lineup. Device simply didn't say anything about Stair and Borop, it seems that they're the ones expected to be changed. It's interesting to see what will come out of this. There are speculations that Astralis might invite Tessus and Aztec, but for now these are purely community theories. Funny enough, changes are happening at NAP at the same time, and the candidates there are about the same. We've already discussed that their sports director confirmed in an interview that they are indeed considering potential reshuffles. Raz also mentioned it. During a stream he answered a chat question saying that the players themselves don't know who will be replaced, but such discussions do exist. In short, something's brewing in NIP, and again, news came from Harumi. The new team, Alliance, plans to buy out Brolan. For those who didn't know, it's a Swedish org, and they just recently introduced their new lineup. All Swedes, Twist, Plassen, and three other players unknown to me. But they are the ones looking to recruit Brolan. Perhaps it's because they play in their native language, and this could be the key reason. As you remember, Brolin left Fnatic because he didn't want to play in English, or at least there were such rumors. Joined NIP and boom, they switched to an international lineup. There were almost no Swedish lineups, so Brolin had to adapt. So now it seems that there's an opportunity to grab. We await further details and watch the great Scandinavian reshuffles. Don't forget that the changes are also planned in Heroic. Rumor has it they will be replacing Tassus and have tried out a large number of players for his spot. It seems that Heroic has finally decided though. According to Harumi, the new player will be, hold on to your seats guys, Dupree, but for now as a stand-in. Now that's what I call great news, one of my favorite players is back on the tier 1 scene and ready to rock. Now we just have to wait for the official announcement. But all of this is just really the tip of the iceberg. The main focus of tonight is Zonic. It's precisely because of him that many reshuffles will happen in the teams. There has been a lot of talk about him leaving Vitality recently. The sides can't agree on a new contract, and the current one expires at the end of the year. Various sources have mentioned this, but last night information came from the French insider KRL, who previously leaked info about Flames, Sphinx and all the reshuffles in Vitality. To my knowledge, he hasn't been wrong yet. According to him, Zonic received an offer he can't refuse. Falcons reached out to the most titled coach and just showered him with money. According to this inside, they're offering him a salary that most pro players can only dream of. Only a couple of players in the entire pro scene will earn more, specifically Simple and Nico. So this inside says that Zonic is being offered from $40,000 a month and up. 
The Saudi Arabian club, besides the insane salary, also provides an unlimited budget for transfers. This means Zanik can sign absolutely anyone. There are talks about Magisk, Dupree and rumors that they might even pick up someone from Astralis, including Device. Overall, they're giving Zanik complete freedom, not only in decisions, but also in finances. Vitality can't even come close to offering something similar. There are also rumors that Zanik is being called to Heroic and he's deciding his future right now. A ready-made tier 1 team with a top captain or complete freedom with unlimited money cheats. If he chooses the latter, it will completely flip the pro scene upside down. Who wouldn't want to play for a Saudi Arabian club for big bucks and under the guidance of a five-time major champion? I feel that even the top tier and most expensive players will consider such an offer. And here the question arises, why is Saudi Arabia investing so much money into the Falcons? The team, to put it mildly, isn't the most well-known and has almost no significant achievements. The main thing is that it's just a local team. And this is where Richard Lewis comes into the picture. He released an hour-long video discussing what the future holds. In short, the Saudi Arabian government is acquiring almost all media rights. This pertains to sports, esports and many other areas. As you may know, many top football players are now also moving to their league for unreal amounts of money. According to Lewis, the same is happening to Formula 1 and golf. Essentially, in his opinion, Saudi Arabia aims to lure a vast amount of media rights to its side, and by 2025 the ESL will host all its tournaments in Saudi Arabia. This is basically why the sheikhs initially bought out the entire pro scene. And it would be foolish if they didn't have a top-tier team of their own. So they're pouring massive funds into the Falcons, which is now the only well-known team in that country. The Saudis are also in talks with Esports Federation and the Olympic Committee. So soon the World Championship of Esports will also be held in Saudi Arabia. You can also google what is sports washing to learn more. And next I'll provide you with a direct quote from Lewis. Listen to me guys, esports will become a pawn in the hands of Saudi Arabia. Football, Formula 1, golf, they're all heading in the same direction. And if you want to continue consuming content related to these sports, you'll be hearing about Saudi Arabia. That's just how it works, they'll wear you down, make you abandon any ideals. Now esports is Saudi Arabia's propaganda machine. Honestly, I personally don't fully understand yet whether all of this is good or bad. On one hand, they're all eliminating competitors and buying up everything in sight, and it's precisely the competition where the best products are born. On the other hand, many esports companies are unprofitable. They survive due to financial injections from various funds and the like. How many times have we seen news about Heroic having no money or Astralis or FaZe, but when such a significant player like an entire country enters the market and in invests tens of millions of dollars into the industry, it's good for esports as a whole. I don't mind watching all the tournaments in Saudi Arabia if they're all of the highest quality, with the best teams playing and receiving massive prizes. In any case, all we can do is watch where all of this leads. Friends, don't forget to share your opinions in the comments below, it will be interesting to discuss and read. It seems that we're in some significant changes era during the season itself. I can already envision the headlines like Falcons creating their dream lineup with Simple, Nico and Zaivo. But you know, anything can happen. By the way, there is another org aiming to build a dream lineup and we're now talking about Cloud9 again. You'd think they spent 2 million dollars on Electronic and Perfecto and they should have been crushing everyone from the get go, but as we saw at the EPL, it didn't quite work out. Everyone was hating on the new Navi lineup, but they even made it to the finals, while Cloud9 couldn't even get out of the group. Apparently, the org's management wanted instant results and are willing to spend a bit more to strengthen the squad. This is what the insider named Jonas provided. People have mixed opinions about him, he often has not really true information, but I'll remind you that that he was the first one to talk about Alexi B joining Navi. Back then everyone was laughing about this, even simple, but in the end look how it turned out. So once again, according to Jonas, Cloud9 wants to buy out Boomich. He will replace Hobbit and Hobbit might move to one win. Excuse me, what? Now that's some reshuffling. Boomich, Electronic and Perfecto could end up together again. It's funny that, according to rumors, Hobbit himself had asked to remove Nefani from the team, but it turns out that he's the one being replaced now. And if you have doubts about Jonas, then further inside information came from Harumi and Overdrive. First, there was news that Hooch will leave one win. Then, Harumi posted that following the coach, Boomich also took a seat on the bench. 
One might think that it's because of the results, but the problem is that in the past week, one win won two consecutive tournaments, earning more than $100,000 in total. After Bumic became captain again, the team's performance significantly improved, so it's odd news that one win is benching their captain. The only plausible explanation is that he's being tested for a new team, and this is confirmed by Overdrive. The plot thickens. Boomich caught the hype and posted a photo with Pikachu on Telegram. For those of you who might not know, Electronic had a Pikachu picture on his Steam account for a long time. The hints are evident. Harumi later clarified that Cloud9 is indeed interested in Boomage, but it's too early to talk about the concrete move. There were rumors that OneWin asked for more than half a million dollars for their captain. In short, there are many rumors and we'll only know the outcome from an official announcement. Of course, it sounds great. The top trio back together, Electronic won't be the captain and Cloud9 will perform much better. But would Electronic want to step down from that role? Will the transfer even happen? Or maybe one win won't let Boomage go, just like what happened with Deco in the past. How do you feel about this reshuffle? Rate it from 1 to 10 in the comments. Lastly, potential changes in Na'Vi. After the EPL final loss, it was Simple's birthday. He posted a story with the caption, There's so much I want to say, but I can't. A little dramatic, right? After this, Hurumi said that Na'Vi might be really considering changes, with Ime apparently being the first in line to leave. But that's not an inside scoop, just a speculation. So in the coming weeks, we're in for some massive transfers, just in time for the release of CS2. We love this stuff, especially if the game gets properly polished. It'll be great. Well, on that note, let's briefly discuss what happened in the EPL finals. As you know, Navi faced off against Mouse in a best of five. The young boys from Mouse against the new Navi lineup. I honestly don't really like best of fives. They rarely get exciting. But this one ended in just three maps. Mouse simply blew Navi out of the water. On the first map, Simple's team got three rounds in one half and four on the second half. And only in the third map, map they did got into the overtimes, and both teams were evenly matched. But honestly, Navi didn't have a chance. All we watched throughout the match was how good the youngsters from Mouse were and how frustrated Simple was with his teammates. Beat and JL both underperformed. In fact, no one from Navi had a positive score across all three maps. It's been a long time since I saw something like that. And Simple made some very odd decisions. For instance, how he decided to go solo against three in the last round on Inferno. His teammates were behind the smoke and there was Simple along with an op against three. The commentators were in shock. And when he got burned by a Molotov on Mirage, everyone clearly realized that something was off with him. Throughout the whole finals, he made decisions that weren't the most obvious and often suffered from them rather than gaining any advantage. We're used to see Simple play very aggressively, doing things that wouldn't even come to mind and winning. But here, either Mouse read all his plays or Simple just had an off day. Mouse were head and shoulders above and deservedly won. M4, but nothing being offered, Mouse. They can feel it. It's coursing through their veins. Just Simple left to stop. One guy left to beat, and then Mouse have done it. Out on an island, Simple falls, and the record will show that when we hit OT, Mao's powered up. They fought harder, they hit harder. The young guns are simply dominating. They had the toughest bracket, unlike Na'Vi. They defeated all the top teams on HLTV and more than deservedly made it to the finals. They beat Heroic, FaZe, G2 and Ends. You just couldn't come up with a tougher bracket. Only Vitality is missing from this list. Torzi received the MVP award and Siyuhi is just a legend. First he uplifted the Mouse Academy, then left, gained experience and now he's lifting the main lineup. Well done, mate. I think they're the future kings of CS2. As for Navi, they were extremely tilted after the grand finals. You can lose gracefully or you can get steamrolled. The Letter happened. Here's what Ime had to say. Got demolished against Mouse. Nothing to say really. We didn't fight our game and they played really well. Grats, brother. You deserve it, Yuhi. No more CSGO from now on. Time to focus on CS2. Well, and Alexi B 
actually says that his teammates turned into enemies during the final. It felt like we only played as a team on Mirage. We cheered each other on, tried to serve ourselves in the game and didn't let emotions get to us. The first two maps felt more like waving a white flag. They were better prepared and didn't allow the same to happen to them. We made a couple of mistakes and it seems like we became enemies within the team. It's critical in a final, everything goes wrong immediately. We couldn't get out of the situation. Alexi B seems to be the most unfortunate of all the players when it comes to best of 5 finals. Just so you know, he's been in such finals 5 times and hasn't won a single map. Mind it, not one. Neither with G2, Ants or Navi. It's like Alexi has been cursed. If you're heading into best of 5 finals, you might want to think twice before making him your team captain. So that's basically how the grand finals of the last CSGO huge tournament turned out. Now we're looking forward to the Blast showdown and then the much anticipated transition to CS2 in terms of esports. And of course, we're waiting for significant reshuffles in the pro scene. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the most important news this fall. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time. See you soon.